Welcome to the Pursuing Perfect podcast with Mark Kashke. Mark is an experienced business leader, lifelong entrepreneur, and a former mayor. On the show, Mark interviews experts who share strategies and experiences on helping perfectionists overcome obstacles and create the life of their dreams. Today on Pursuing Perfect, happy to have with us Sandy Grigsby. She's a personal brand image expert and founder of Brio5, a leading brand photography studio focused on personal branding. She helps people uncover their unique style, find their confidence, and own their self-worth, helping them to launch a powerful, authentic, and alluring personal brand. Sandy is also a TEDx speaker, certified high performance coach, and confidence catalyst. Welcome, Sandy. Thank you for having me, Mark. You know, walk us through your journey that got you where you are today. Whew, that's a big one. Do we have enough time? <laughs> uh, well, you know, it started when I was very young. I had a very controlling father. He was a totalitarian. And he pretty much made all the decisions for me. And he wouldn't allow me to do what I wanted to do in my life. And so from a very young age, I became very submissive to him. And as time went on, that submissive state started to dominate my life. And in order to make him happy, I learned to become a perfectionist. I had to be perfect at everything, perfect at coloring, perfect at my homework, perfect at the art I was making, perfect at the activities I was doing. Everything had to be perfect and nothing I ever did for him was good enough. So everything got critiqued and judged. And I ended up, like I said, carrying that through my entire life. And even in my careers, I ended up changing careers. I started out as a graphic designer and then I became a portrait photographer. And in your mem, while I was doing that, I was also a commercial print model. And of course, as a designer, everything had to be perfect. I obsessed over my art. As a photographer, everything had to be perfect. Since I was a model, I started teaching my clients how to pose so they would look perfect. And the blessing through all of that was in my struggle to be perfect, I ended up becoming a Jackie Jackie, of all trades. So I learned how to do everything. I mean, I was grooming dogs, laying hardwood floors, cooking. I knew how to do pretty much everything. And I finally realized that that perfectionism wasn't my enemy. It actually made me become talented and more creative. And I had all of these wonderful things happen because of my perfectionism that I could no longer live in blaming my perfectionism for what was happening to me. So I chose to accept it and then move forward. So I teach now personal branding. I teach confidence. I teach people how not to be perfectionists because it's easy to, to live in a story. I'm a perfectionist. Oh, that's why I do this. Or I can't finish it because I'm a perfectionist. But if you accept that, wait, I'm a perfectionist. And now I can do all of these amazing things. You can change your story and create the life of your dreams. Now, as a photographer, model, everything, I'm not any of those. So <laughs> how do I know? Well, I'm not a politician, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> how do I know when I'm off brand and... How do I even know what to ask? Exactly. And that's the thing that I've discovered most people struggle with. They have no idea. And you can really tell when you Google search them and nothing comes up or what does come up doesn't match them. So for example, I'm sure you've experienced where you meet someone in person and they're wonderful, their personality, you just click with them instantly. And then you go and look at their social media and you're like, wait, is this the same person? Like, huh? why is everything so dark? And they seem so sad in their pictures. And gosh, I, if I had found their social media, I would never have reached out to them. It, there's a disconnect. 
right? So when there's that disconnect, when you look at your own social media or you Google yourself and what comes up just isn't you, that's when you know you need to do some work. Also, if you have a product or something you're marketing and people just aren't gravitating towards it, it's just not working. There might be a disconnect with how you're showing up. And the way to solve it actually requires that you go deep and look at how you actually define yourself. Some people say, who are you? I don't like to say that so much. I like to say, how would you like to show up or how do you represent yourself? Because if you're showing up in a way on social media and in the public, even in person, it could be in a way that isn't working for you. Like I said, you're not getting the clients. You are not making those connections. You're not, for some people, it's finding love. You're not finding your love match. Maybe who you, how you actually define yourself isn't coming across. So I take people through a journey of understanding who they are and how they want to show up and who they were at one point in their life and how, and compare it to how they are today. And then to come up with new words for how they want to define themselves. And once you know those new words, then you can take a blanket look at everything you've got available to you. And you can decide if you're showing up authentically or not. And if you need to work on your brand. Now, for someone like myself who might be a perfectionist, you know, we're bombarded by photoshopped images. We look at people who have been doing social media forever and are like, oh, I could never do that or gosh, I'm just not attractive. How do you work with that? Well, first, I always start by taking people through what your fears are. So if someone says, oh, I'm just not attracted, for example, generally that stems from some sort of belief or story they've told themselves that they're not good enough. I personally believe that everyone is beautiful. It doesn't matter. If you've seen people who have burns all over their face, if you look at them, you might be turned off at first by the way that they come across, the way they look with the burns, right? Because it's not normal to us. They're not perfect. But when you look into their eyes and you see the story that they're telling and their kindness and the way that a lot of burn victims will live authentically because that's all they have, all of a sudden you see past the burn and you see their beauty. So I truly believe everyone is beautiful. And and I want to give you an example. Think of a time where you walked into an event and you didn't notice someone. Like there was a person there. You didn't even notice them. You paid no mind. You just kept going, talking to your people. And you got introduced to them and you kind of second, like, eh, you kind of dismissed them. Like, eh, eh, they're not a big deal, right? But for some reason, you were forced to talk to them. And then all of a sudden, they said something that, that piqued your interest. They sparked you. And the way that they spoke and the story that they were telling, they were so passionate about what they were doing. The longer you looked at them, the more beautiful they became. And then later you start talking about that person. Oh my gosh, I have to introduce you to the most incredible person. And to you, that person is now beautiful, right? That's happened, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So now think of a time where you walked into an event and you saw a gorgeous person. I mean, they were striking. I walk eyes straight on them. Something about the way they carried themselves, the hair, the clothing, just everything was flawless. And you're just looking at them going, God, this person is so beautiful. And then you spoke to them and they were cold, curt, disrespectful. They could care less about you. Instantly, that feeling of admiration and how great you think they are, is it, it evaporates. And you go, ooh. And then when someone else asks about them, like, oh, yeah, no, mm -mm, you don't want to deal with them. They're not very nice. You don't think they're attractive anymore. I can tell you a plethora of celebrities that I have actually met in person who were so mean and so cold and so I'm better than you. And when I had seen them in images and videos and movies before, I thought they were just God's gift to the earth. They were so incredibly stunning. And when I actually met their real personality, it shifted. And now I can't see anything attractive about them at all, right? So you have to take it from that, that note, that point. How are you showing up? Are you showing up in a place of love and compassion and understanding and sharing the gifts? Because being a perfectionist, we know you have many, Mark. <laughs> are you sharing that with the world? 
Or are you being guarded and, and self-centered and selfish and, and just completely off-putting to other people? So if you are being loving and kind and compassionate and sharing your gifts instinctually to another, you will become attractive because you are. You're living in your true beauty. Beauty comes from within. We can do anything to our face. And another thing is, I'd love for you to look on, on uh, Instagram, for example. If you look at some of the biggest influencers, some of the most famous people that have the biggest following, the ones that are just full of joy, if you really break down their features, there's nothing about them that would drop them into the category of being classically beautiful, yet they are absolutely stunning. I would agree. I mean, some of my favorite actors, actresses aren't the most classically beautiful. Yes, absolutely. Now, it's about personality from within. Now, I have heard you talk about own your confidence. Yes. How do you do that? How do you become your authentic self so that people do want to hear what you have to say and are attracted to you? Okay. So it goes back to what I had mentioned earlier about the person who was beautiful and radiant. And you saw them when you, before you knew anything about them. One characteristic about people who come across as confident is posture and poise. So it's the way they carry themselves. If you carry yourself with your spine elongated, like the top of your head is reaching to the stars, your shoulders are back and relaxed, your chest is lifted and you're walking with power. Instantly, you give the illusion of confidence, even if you're not. When you back that illusion up with the words that you say and having trust in yourself, which is what confidence is, it's to trust oneself, you are confident. Now, are you saying you can fake it till you make it? At first, you can. And I'm not a huge fan of faking it till you make it because I believe that you really need to dig deep and pull it out yourself. So to really own your confidence, you have to figure out what is it that makes you unique? We all have something. What is your story that makes people go, oh, wow. Oh, that's interesting. What is that thing that you feel really great helping someone with? And it doesn't have to be huge things. You don't have to be a doctor or an astronaut or some sort of physicist to be confident. You could be a dad, a dad who spends time with his son to make sure that your son is reading properly to make sure that you play sports with him and he's enjoying it. It doesn't even matter if he sucks at the game, if he's enjoying it and he's living in joy because he's happy and he's having fun, you're doing a great job. You should be confident about that. So if you can pull upon those feelings, the feelings that you know you're doing a great job as a dad, yeah, sometimes it's not perfect, but you're giving it your all, you're doing it with love and compassion and, and your gifts, you're sharing your gifts with your child, there's confidence right there. So you want to take that feeling the feeling that you evoke from that instance of actually owning something you're really good at and then merging it with the illusion, the standing and the posing and the acting in a way that feels confident. And then the confidence becomes real. Because if you walk in and you have the pose, you have the chest up, the shoulders back and you're elongating your spine and you look really powerful and then you open your mouth and it's really weak and soft, the illusion's destroyed. So you got to back it up with something. So yes, it's kind of a fake it till you make it, but you still have to have substance. Now, what are the most common questions people ask you versus what they should be asking you? Oh, wow. That's a great question. The most common questions I get are, how can I look better in photos? How do I get rid of my double chin? I don't feel good about myself. How do I get out of depression? Those are the things that most people ask. What they should be asking is, what can I do to really understand who I am? What can I do to get past my perfectionism and just do it? How can I show up as who I am so I don't have to feel like I'm pretending all of the time? Those are the real questions they should ask. Because if you want to look better on camera, it goes back to that, remember how someone can be not so attractive at first and then you get to know them and then they're really beautiful. You have to understand yourself to exude that all of the time. 
So if you don't understand yourself and you're doubting yourself and you're living in misery and you're not good enough and I can't and all those negative Nelly words, how are you going to come across as radiant and beautiful and confident? You're destroying yourself. So, I mean, ultimately, anyone can radiate beauty, confidence, competence, and be successful. Anyone. And that's the beauty of this. And that's the gift that I get to share with the world is to awaken people to the reality that you can be anything you want. You can be a crotchety, crabby, mean, vindictive, gossipy, unattractive person, or you can be a loving, compassionate, understanding, joyful, fun, upbeat, helpful, playful person. It's 100% up to you. Now, is there a piece of advice you wish you could have given your younger self that would make all the difference today? Yes. That advice would be love yourself. I know it sounds so simple. And you're like, oh, everyone says that. I didn't get it for decades. I would hear everyone say, oh, self-love, oh, self-care. Oh. And then I would get annoyed because I didn't understand what they meant. It meant nothing to me because I'm like, I love myself. I'm eating a fruit right now. Like, I love myself. I'm relaxing and watching Netflix. Like, I, I didn't get it. And one day it hit me. And the way that I pose it to people to really understand if they love themselves is you first have to decide if you even like yourself. So, Mark, if you were to walk down the street and you ran into a person and you have never met this person before in your entire life, and unbeknownst to you, this person is you. So maybe it's a parallel universe. You guys have lived exactly the same life and you come across each other. If you were to to sit down with that person and have a conversation, what do you think you would say? Well, I would hope people found me friendly, approachable, and down to earth. Well, what would you say? You just ran into you. You don't know it's you. Would you, okay. would you say hello? Would you say, would you like a coffee or uh, where are you from? What, what, how would you start up a conversation? You know, what I love to do is try to learn about the other person. Okay, so what would be the first question you would ask? Oh, good question. You know, I'm not trying to avoid it here, but it might be how we met or how I saw you. So, okay, so you're going to ask yourself a dog. So, I might ask about your dog. Oh, perfect. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. So, you walk into yourself. And I'm assuming, Mark, you have a dog? Yes. Okay. So this person has the same dog. So now you're like, we have the same dog. What did you name your, what's your dog's name? Mark, what's your dog's name? Uh, Bentley. I love that name. It's the best name. Bentley. Wouldn't you be shocked if you ran into someone whose dog, same dog, was named Bentley? I would be, yes. Would it impress you a little? Well, uh, the next question I would ask is, ours is still a puppy at eight months old. And theirs is a puppy too. And was only supposed to be 40 to 50 pounds full grown. And he is already at 85 pounds. And so is this person's. Wouldn't you start laughing? Oh, yeah. It would instantly camaraderie because you guys understand the same pain, the pain of expecting something and getting something different, but yet still falling in love with this dog and the same name. You guys will start laughing and having a blast, right? Oh, absolutely. Okay. So now the conversation goes deeper and you find out you came from the same town. You both were in politics. What are the chances of that? You're laughing. Things are great. You're really enjoying the conversation. And now you have to part. When you leave that situation with this person that you don't know is you, would you say you like that person? Yes or no? Oh, absolutely. (laughs) 
Yep. And that's the first question we need to ask ourselves. If the answer is no, which believe it or not, Mark, I've had people say no, then you have to start evaluating what is really going on. And I had someone say no, and their answer was, well, I'm not at where I think I should be in my life. I don't have the job I have. I don't have the finances I want. I don't have the job I want. I don't have the finances I want. I don't live where I want. I, my relationships haven't worked. It just kind of sucks. I just, I'm not, no, I, would, I wouldn't like myself. And I said, the question I asked was, if you ran into the person who had a conversation, would you like them at the end? Not, would you look at all the things that you don't have, right? And when you take them background, I took this person background and she goes, well, I mean, well, yeah, actually, yeah, I never thought of it like that. I would like me. I'm awesome. And that's where it hits. Once you realize you like yourself, that can bleed into truly loving yourself. And once you love yourself, everything in life becomes easier. So the one thing I would have, I would say to myself as a younger version of me is you have to really love you first, because when you love yourself, you don't tolerate things. You won't allow someone to be verbally, physically, or mentally abusive to you. You're like, excuse me? Hold on. I could hang out with me all day and I'm hanging out with you. Get out of here. You wouldn't tolerate a crappy job because you like yourself too much to put yourself through that kind of punishment. If you liked yourself, if you loved yourself, you wouldn't put bad food into your mouth because it would kill your liver, your kidneys, your heart, your organs. You wouldn't do that to yourself. So to truly love yourself changes everything. And when you truly love yourself, you start saying yes to things that you know will do good for you, including relationships, including jobs, including situations. You know, think of all the precarious situations you put yourself through as a youth because you didn't really care. But if you loved yourself, you wouldn't. Think of your children or your animal that you wouldn't put them through certain things because you love them so much. I don't want to risk that. Well, imagine giving that love to yourself and all the abuse and travesties you would not take or tolerate. That is a very unique new way. I never thought about looking at it. Now, if people are looking to work with you, engage with you, how do they do that? Well, the best thing is you can follow me on Instagram at Sandy and Focus or on TikTok at sandyandfocus.com, which don't even get into it as a long story. But yeah, sandyandfocus.com on TikTok. <laughs> and my website is very easy. It's sandyandfocus.com, like my TikTok. And there you can find everything I have to offer. I have programs on confidence and personal branding. And they, I have do-it-yourself do programs. And I have programs where you can join group calls and do coaching one-on-one -on -one with me. And that's where you could start. And we have a lot of fun. I actually, right before this podcast, I wrapped up a call with my most recent group and we had special guest Eric Edmeads on our call. And he was talking about public speaking and personal branding because he's huge in his space. He's got three businesses and they are doing incredibly well. And so he gave us his insight, which was fabulous for the group. And yeah, we just have fun and come from a place of love and intention and being authentically you. So you can sell whatever it is you want to sell and get whatever you want, you whatever you want in life. Well, I would encourage listeners to check you out. You have given us a plethora of wonderful pieces of advice. Thanks. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for having me.